So welcome to another motivation, inspiration interview uh, to support our community locally, globally, uh, nationally and globally. Um, it's been a pleasure to do all these interviews and, and support motivation, inspiration. Today, we've got a special guest and I've met Alex um, some time ago, which she can enlighten you about. But uh, Alex Wallace from the Meet Reads Foundation. Hello. Hi, Andy. Thank you very much for having me. Very exciting to be here. So share a bit, share a bit more about what we do shortly. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, yeah, talking about the Meet Reads Foundation, then you, know, you, you go over about... 20 sports or more to support the communities and the people that you work with and also the ambassadors that you work with to to promote uh the meet Reads foundation tell me a bit more about obviously the meet Reads foundation and also how it all started um, and where you came in to play that part yeah absolutely um i think it's it, it's grown so much since 2015 when we started um but the core of why we do what we do is has never changed and i think for for me trying to explain that I I love people's reaction because it's almost like yes of course this is needed and why why wouldn't this already be happening and so what we what we do we have a team of sports stars across many different sports and disciplines Olympic sports Paralympic sports and so on that um, help develop the mental fitness of young people and that's achieved through uh, through mentoring programs so we deliver programs in schools with a variety of sports, but it's so much deeper than just the sport. It's actually who is that role model delivering that program. So we have an Olympian stood in front of young people of different ages that are from a very similar background to them um, that can share their story. They can share what they've overcome to achieve what they've achieved. Um, and that in turn helps those young people think wow look what they've done I can do that too it gives them that confidence it gives them the confidence to move it gives them the confidence to shine and, and I think what's so exciting is that we never know what outcomes we're going to get from the programs because it's so far reaching um, through sport and beyond which is is magical and it, it's a very special and privileged position to be in but um, we also go even deeper and um, and I always wanted to ensure a legacy to what we do. And that's achieved through uh, our six month mentoring programs. So after a visit, the athlete will leave, but some of the students will then gain remote access to the, to the sports staff for six months where we don't have a prescriptive program in place. But what we do have is a safeguarded environment where those young people can chat to someone that isn't in their normal environment and they can help them on and nurture them on their pathway of, of sport or it might be kickstarting a, a sporting journey that they've never thought about or discovered yet until uh, that Mitra ambassador has ignited that within them um, so that that in itself is is just so powerful and and to see how again how far reaching the outcomes can be is huge and to, to final, finalise the programme and to, to give that celebratory aspect, we then get to go and watch live sport with the athlete and their mentee and their families. So we know the magic that live sport can bring, but it's actually getting to know them and their family and what support they get at home to really ensure that we're able to, to offer the right support as well. Um, and the opportunities of being mascots, getting behind the scenes access is just we all love it no matter what our age is so that's very much a snapshot of of the programs um but i think the reasons behind it are very personal and um i was what what would have been called a traditional traditionally sporty student at school and um hockey was my particular focus uh i made it my aim to play for england from a very early age um and i played week in week out uh, until I got to those England trials under 16 level um, and it was there that I was completely overcome with pressure I had this huge fear of failure inside me and in in turn I didn't I didn't perform at those trials and I didn't get selected um, I really struggled with that I'd never not been selected for anything I felt that I was Alex the hockey player to everyone um, and now my identity was sort of under threat. Um, so it took a lot, a lot of learning to realize that 
actually I'm Alex that plays hockey I'm not Alex the hockey player there's so much more to me but that was only discovered after I fell into depression and really struggled with my mental health because in my head I couldn't I couldn't have depression over something as silly as sport that's what that's what people get if they've experienced really traumatic um, elements in their lives and I just haven't had that so it's it took a few years but once I sort of come out the other side and and had greater self-awareness um, I thought what what would still be enabling me to be playing hockey today in any capacity because I completely lost lost my love for it I uh, I say that my biggest love became my worst enemy I was playing because I had to not because I wanted to and then it just gradually fell out of what I did um, and I think it was largely down to the fact that I didn't have a mentor and my family were hugely supportive, but they didn't necessarily know what to do and how to cope apart from take me to matches, take me to training, which they absolutely did from the age of six to however old. And they wouldn't, wouldn't have changed that. But I think they had no idea about the world of professional sport. Um, and I think, if I had had a mentor that had been there and done that and been through the system, I think I'd have coped much better. And, and I wanted to be able to bridge that gap between professional sport and youth and show that these extraordinary people that have achieved extraordinary things are actually just normal and like the rest of us and humanize them. So that's where the idea came from. And then I just started to put my feelers out and approach athletes on Twitter, on social media and and say, this is my idea. Will you come with me? Um, and I think it was so exciting to see how many of them wanted to because they saw the power of it and they wanted to be able to use their platform for the good of others. Um, and I think that's something that I fail to appreciate that actually it's very much a a full circle both parties both the youth and the athletes leave un enriched and inspired and 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 that's that's what I love that there's a whole full circle approach um so to me that that's what started it and schools have taken it in lots of different directions um but as well it, it, it's always that deeper level of how we can really change things and I think Again, my 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 childhood, my role model was a male rugby player. It was Johnny Wilkinson. Um, but why was he my role model? Yeah, I loved his commitment to his team. I loved his performance on the pitch, and I loved rugby. But actually, I don't. I didn't really realise that it was possible for as many women and girls to achieve so many things. I didn't know who the GB hockey women's team were without really searching for it. So part of what we do at Mintridge is having a really diverse team of athletes that every young person can relate to to some to one at least one of them and think look what I've achieved um they've done that why why can't why can't I do it too so it's all about the relatability um both able-bodied disabled sports anything I want every young person to think I've got that leg or I'm in a, I'm in a wheelchair too I didn't know this was possible and I didn't know what sports were available but this is this is what there is and it's igniting that that passion in in, in each of them so that was a very long introduction I'm really sorry <laughs> no, that's all right. to be fair you've answered most of my questions but that's okay <laughs> yeah. um, but going going on to the questions and, and obviously you talk yeah. about um motivation inspires you but what who or what you know, most of those who inspires you and, and gives you that passion and inspiration, especially with regards to the Mitmeets Foundation? Yeah, I think um, I always look at, I think as lots of sports people, um, you want to achieve, you want to achieve quite quickly, you want to see results. And I think when you create anything, whether it's a charity, whether it's a business, it doesn't happen like that. It doesn't happen instantly. And so big ones for me on a high the ones that I can look up to and, and I don't know them at all but I look at Steve Jobs and what he achieved with Apple and it took him 20 years and I think I often get quite um quite concerned if we have a setback or if we haven't reached the target for a particular month and then I just think well look it took Steve Jobs 20 years with Apple we can you know we can we can have a, a few a few weeks windows here or there to help so that's definitely someone on a on a bigger stage that I look at 
for the aspirations that we have with the charity. Um, but I think personally, I will never, I'm never ever going to underestimate the power that my family have had and the support that everyone says, you're so brave for setting up a business or you're so brave for setting up a charity, but I've never considered myself brave because from an early age, a serial entrepreneur in my father is all that I've ever known. So it's it was just an ordinary thing to do was to, to try and create something. Um, and I think what how lucky am I that I experienced that because so many people have these ideas and passions and they never move forward with it because they always think of what's the first hurdle and actually I've had that support system behind me so my parents have been huge and my sounding board in so many areas that I yeah I just I would love to be able to share that with so many people and and more recently with with my husband and yeah it's, you have the highs and the lows in running a running a small organization so I think to have someone that is there every step of the way and and not necessarily involved in the day-to-day -day and and that side I I really like because you can have someone that looks in it and doesn't get bogged down with the everyday and they can actually look at it with fresh eyes so yeah I'm very very lucky to have to have such supportive Close oh, thank, thank you for sharing. I mean, you know, as, as I said, we, you know, starting what we do, we make change and, and where we're going. And, you know, we've been only going for, I think, less than nine months. And it, it's interesting, as you say, to look at where you are and see how quickly we've expanded, but then think about, you know what, are we going too quickly? Or are we going too slowly? And how do we do this in a way that's going to not only support our mental well-being, but also the people that we work with? Um, yeah, yeah. But, Thinking about obviously motivation and inspiration, how, why is motivation and inspiration so important to support others? Oh gosh, that's a great <laughs> question. Um, I think motivation and inspiration to me is the power of role models and igniting something in, in different people. I think in this particular case of Mintridge, so much of what we're delivering and what we're saying and, and, and shouting about, teachers are sharing that with young people, parents, carers are sharing that with young people. And it's exactly the same message, but it's coming from a very different person. It's coming from someone that young people see on the telly or they see in, um, that have a blue tick on social media. Or, and I think it's, wow, this person, is special this person is giving up time for me and I think young there's lives are so busy that actually having that one one-on-one -on -one support or that nurture is getting harder and harder in so many different environments lives are getting busier teachers are getting busier that actually we need young people to think these people are really investing time in me and and I think that's that's what's needed but I, I mean, inspiration looks really different for so many different people and, and everyone has different motivations in life. And I think that's really important. We all need to be really different. Um, but I think it's, it, that, that's what it is for me. It's, it's having different voices sharing that motivation and inspiration to, to ensure that every young person feels that they have that support that they deserve. No, thank you, thank you. I mean, you know, as I said, it's it's interesting because I, you know, we we started motivation, inspiration, um, interviews prior to the pandemic. It's something that we we took on board, regards to, you know, uh, um, as a frustration for our point of view, with our mental well being, and it, it just grew and grew. But you know, as we move forward and think about continuing these kind of interviews that we're doing, it's it's interesting speaking to different type, you know, inspirational people like yourself that, you know, and moving forward in the community. And, and we talk about, you know, inclusion and diversity in, in the community, but how does that build on, you know, motivation, inspiration, but also support it and also build on resilience and determination? Because as you say, you know, the, the, the way the system is at the moment, and the lives are really busy and young people coming through, there's, there seems to be in some cases, lack of aspirations. Yeah, I think I think for me, what with inclusion and diversity, it's a lot of questions or thoughts that people have around the subject 
particularly adults, are afraid to ask them or afraid to get it wrong and afraid to be called out. And the more I've done with Mintridge, actually asking those questions is the most important thing. It's and the, the, it, let's let's talk about someone that might have a disability. They might they might be an amputee and we go in somewhere and, in the, and, and an adult might think I can't ask them how they lost their leg I can't ask them how they go out for a run you just don't do that and actually the more the more we encourage people to ask those questions no matter how alien they might seem or fear of being called out I think the better because it is just normalizing it it's normalizing that yes I might be in a wheelchair or I might have a prosthetic leg or I might have an invisible disability but until we're we're shouting about all the success that these people have in an everyday environment I think people are going to get more and more scared um, because you can get called out instantly and 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 so on so it's putting it into everyday situations and having different different uh, individuals working on it that I think is the way that it will work and starting that from an early age and normalizing it um, because as I say, people are, people are nervous to get called out. So I love the fact that we can go into a school and, and play wheel, wheelchair basketball. And until that point, teachers and, and young people might think, well, I can't play wheelchair basketball because I'm not, I'm not wheelchair bound. And actually you can play it and it's really fun to play and it's really, really quite hard work. Um, and I think then having that level playing field is so exciting and, and you're opening those eyes to to people that can potentially be a game changer or can go and help um, increase numbers at a local club. And I just think that's that's what we need to do and just need to keep talking about it and, and don't be afraid to, because it's taken me quite a while to, to not be afraid to ask and understand that that's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, I mean, moving on to a message then in regards to young people and you know, the people in the community who have uh, been through trauma or impacting issues and conditions in crisis, part of their day life towards, you know, towards inspiring their motivation and, and aspirations of resilience and determination for the future. What would your message be to young people, um, you know, with regards to working with Mint Ridge Foundation or the message from Mint Ridge or from Alex Weiss herself? What's, so what, sorry, what's the message around? What, yeah, what, what message would you give to young people to support their motivation and inspiration who are going through these, these traumas or these issues or these daily life of in crisis or experience, you know, at a period of time in an economic situation themselves? Yeah, I think I, I, someone asked me what I would say to my 16-year-old self if I, um, if I could go back and to me, I can't, I wouldn't want to change anything because the fa the failure I had and um, the awareness that it, it, and the time that it took for me to understand myself better, I wouldn't want to change any of that because it's led me to this path of Mintridge and what I'm doing. So all, I, all I'd like to say to young people is, um, well, there's two things. Well, there's a few more things, but two things I'd like to point out. One is failure is just feedback um, we're all going to fail it, at different levels and that only motivates me more when I do fail as to, to the success and actually what can I learn from that and how will that help me into whatever journey that I want to go on whether it's in sport or whether it's in um, any other area so that's that's the biggest thing and I think the second element is that it's easier than you think um, again in whatever everyone always looks at the stumbling blocks everyone always looks at the hurdles and I try to look at okay how can we overcome them so if we look at setting up Mintridge in my example okay the biggest thing for setting up a company or a charity is okay income or finance where's that going to come from and that doesn't come like that but what did I have at that time I had I built up a skill set of coaching. So I was coaching sports in the evenings that was keeping my income coming in that allowed me to pursue my dream in the daytime. And it, yes, that meant that it took longer, um, but a lot of things take longer, but the best things to come from it. So don't, don't look at hurdles, look at them as, as a way and a, and a chance to, 
to create more time for whatever you're doing um, with motivation and inspiration. I hope that makes sense. No, brilliant. Thank, no, yeah. thank you. Um, I mean, regards to your own experiences, and, and you know, you just you um, pointed on a few of those. How do you take care of your own mental well-being and part of your daily life, and how does this build on your resilience and determination? Yeah, I really struggle um, and I get really annoyed with myself because I don't practice what I preach all the time. Um, and I think um, I have to keep taking a step back and having that perspective. And having young nieces and nephews who I absolutely adore has really helped because I might be having a really stressful day in the office and and panicking about the, the income that's coming in for this month or we haven't achieved this. Yeah. And actually I go and spend half an hour with them watching watching Bluey or something and they're giggling away and they're chuckling. And it's like, actually this is, they're, they're teaching me so much. And, and I think I need to be better at switching off and I've done it to a certain extent. I've taken, um, emails off my phone I turn off my personal social media in the week and all of those things because I really struggle with anxiety a lot of the time so those things only manifest themselves and when I'm busy and tired and traveling then that's that's only going to get worse so I think it's just being stricter with that and um, that will help me um, because being mindful being present I find really hard when you are you are running an organization however big or small because Mintridge isn't huge we don't have lots of employees but it's that pressure of, of, of that side so for me I found my sport is tennis and I love that I get really frustrated when people say go out and have a run and that's really good for your mental well-being well no that's not because the kind of person I am I'm running I'm like this I'm not I'm not quick enough I'm not fast enough I used to be so much faster um whereas tennis I have to be completely mindful completely present I'm nowhere near my phone I can't check anything and um and that to me is is how I how I try to look after it but I need to be much better and I need to be a bit more selfish I think and that's okay to be selfish. <laughs> well, and I, and I, I totally agree with you. you know, it, it's it, it's interesting from a point of view because you know, it, I, you know, my grandkids when I'm with them and and having the opportunity to watch them develop and and you think, wow, <laughs> and yeah. and that's the thing, isn't it? It's how to how do you switch off? How do you support your own mental health to move forward in where you're going with your organisation as well? Um, yeah. We have a quick fire round, and I, I brought okay. this in. Um, last year uh towards christmas time because it's it's something that people wanted to see and also it's a bit um it's a bit comical as well so so oh no okay are I'm you ready, ready for our five quick fire round questions yeah <laughs> so uh alex wallace what is your favorite food roast beef and yorkshire pudding with the yorkshire pudding round the beef right. Fav favorite drink favorite drink uh oyster bay white wine sauvignon Wow. <laughs> favorite film or TV show? Uh, Gavin and Stacey. Wow. Okay, favorite music? Spice Girls. <laughs> okay, and <laughs> if you had a superhero power, what would that be and why? Oh, I hate this question. <laughs> um, I think I would like to fly. I'd like to be able to fly. Yeah. So and I can the reason, get the reason behind why would you like to fly? Why would I like to fly? I think um, seeing friends and family a lot quicker than you than I can currently and spending more quality time with everyone I think reduce that travel is that allowed <laughs> yeah it's for, absolutely absolutely <laughs> some, some of the superhero powers have been quite interesting we I think one of them was um, teleporting is, is a lot quicker as well yeah, uh, catching yeah. public transport and and driving a car um our final two questions relate to uh, yourself in the future so Regards to what is next, what is the next aim for Alex Wallace and the Meet Rich Foundation? Regards to the future. Yes, yeah, so uh, we are at a really exciting stage um, with the foundation, and we have got very uh, an extraordinary patron, two extraordinary patrons that we're announcing at the end of the year that will allow us to scale up and achieve lots of the aspirations that we have. Um, but also going back to the self-care point, allowing us as the small team behind the scenes to have 
more time for ourselves um, by growing by growing the team that we have. So that's that's the next step um, for for Mintridge, and that's very much within what is for Alex Wallace as well. And and to be able to 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 scale up um, in the way that we want to and not lose the personal family feel that we have for the charity. Okay, and our final question that we've always included in part of our interviews is, if you could think of a quote to support motivation and inspiration, what would that quote be and why? Motivation and um, I think it's to find something more important than you and devote your life to it. Because I think for me, my purpose is the next generation and the highs and lows that I've had from sport to take those learnings and to, to, to support young people to not necessarily go through the negatives that I did. But also you can take that quote into so much more. And, and if you don't have purpose with whatever you're looking to achieve, like if you don't know why you're doing it, then you're going to really struggle. And I think that why has got to be for you and for no one else um because you're going to spend a lot of time doing whatever you choose to do and and you have to be happy doing it so yeah find something that's more important than you and devote your life to it and um pinky lalani was the lady that said that to me um who is an extraordinary human and has created an amazing program in the women of the future program which is a network i'm part of and i think that that quote came to me at the right time and I think it really helped me articulate why I do what I do with Mintridge and I hope that it helps others articulate with whatever journey they're on as well. Alex Wallace, it's been a pleasure to interview. Thank you so much for being part of our motivation and inspiration interviews. Um, I look forward to joining whatever Mintridge Foundation do in the future. Uh, as I said, you know, we, we did um, cross paths recently and take part in um something to do with marks and spencers but i'll let you explain that you you know it's over to mint ridge so uh, that's fine but uh, thank you so much um i look forward to working with you in the future and thank you again for the interview thank you oh thank you so much andy really excited to be part of it so thank you thank you bye-bye <laughs>